another catch up Dave first of all obviously the the main talking point is you announced your retain list of course and when you look at it three senior pros obviously make the headlines two in particular in Paul Green and Nicky Hunt who've had a, a couple of fantastic years with you a disappointing time for you yeah um, you know I think uh, both them players especially have been a, um, a real credit to themselves and terrific servants to this football club um, you know, sometimes players can have a, a big impact over a long period of time and longevity is important. Others in a, in a relatively short period of time and, and in Green is two and a half years, in Hunt is two years, it's, um, you know, they, they've made a terrific impact. They've helped for me, you know, and I've, I've said this to them, they've, they've helped me, us as a group, turn around a, 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 a sinking ship and, and, turned it on the right course and it's, you know, we firmly believe we're heading on the right path now and that's in no small part down to them too. You talked many times, didn't you, about the uh, the old lads in, in in the squad, you know, what they've done. And is that something that in, in the period that you've learned? I know that you've brought in all sorts of different players and had quite a lot of success with your recruitment. But is that something that you've learned that when you're going into the recruitment business like you are now, how important that is, the likes of the, the hunty and greeny professionalism? Yeah, I think um, I think if you ask any manager, would they rather have a good character or a talented boy? I think they'd go for good character, <coughs> first and foremost. Ideally, you want it with a bit of ability as well uh, and talent. But the last thing you want is people who are um, rocking the boat, if you want for a better, better term. And, and them too, certainly didn't. I have to say, they've been terrific. And it, like I say, last, last Tuesday was a, a real sad day um, for, for a lot of reasons. But giving the news to them, too, particularly, was um, not nice. It wasn't nice at all because um, they, didn't really, they didn't really deserve it, if I'm being honest. Um, and I don't want to sort of say too much, and, you know, because my words can be construed as insincere. But um, I, I truly hope that they go on and finish their careers in a flourish um, because they, they deserve to. They deserve to. Well, you talk about those players, Paul Green, Nicky Hunt, and you know, Sean Miller's had his couple of spells. He's a local boy as well. He's done his business for the football club. Didn't quite work out this time. On the other side of the coin, the likes of Lewis Riley, Connor Heath, and Aaron Lomas are the three young lads trying to find a way it hasn't happened for them at crew and that again is a, another dark side to being the football manager but it's a, a decisions you have to do yeah I think when you you know you're at one end of the spectrum you, you, you turn people who've made a, a, a real big impact and have probably heard it before and then the other side of the coin the same coin is you feel as though you're crushing people's dreams now they've got this far all three of them that they've got ability, that they've now got to go and forge their careers elsewhere. Now, we'll help them. I've already made quotes to some managers on behalf of one of them. Um, and I think if, uh, if another vote goes their way in the next couple of days, or whenever it is, Monday, I think, then they might be playing football quite quickly. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's not easy telling people I have to say, um, so it, it's it's part of the job um, that we w wish all of them, whether they're young, old, or anything in between, all the best, and we'll do anything we can. And I, I genuinely hope that our paths cross in future. I, I genuinely do, and we'll we'll be as uh, accommodating to their requirements going forward as we can. Because what we don't do is we don't just turf them out and not take calls or not make calls on their behalf. Um, we do genuinely try and help them out and that's what we've done. Has COVID-19 affected your decisions that you had to make? Yes. That's difficult then that something like that is, is, is how, how it, well, it tells you, doesn't it? How serious it is and what it could do to the world of football then in the changing period now. Yeah, 
Um, we're not the only club. No. I think I think the, the any club that says they haven't been affected by it will be very much in the minority. And when I say a handful, I mean it might be three or two. Mm. I would imagine every single football club has. So we're no different in that respect. And we've had to cut our cloth accordingly. And that's what we'll continue to do. Um, you know, uh, I'm really part of the history. And that's what it is. You know, the, the chairman and, and the board are really custodians uh, until the, you know, the baton gets handed down and, and continues to get handed down. Um, and nobody wants you know, to have a black stain in terms of administration or in terms of anything like that on, on their CV. And that's what the board's objective is. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's what we have to do. And every single football club is in the same board. You know, I saw Man United's figures last, last week. In one quarter, they've lost 29 million quid. So it's a fair chunk of money, that, for Man United. You know, even though they're millions, you know, we, we're no different. Um, and, and every single football club's no different. Everyone's cutting their cloth accordingly. Yes, the figures towards the top end of the period have more notes on the end. You know, everyone was in the same boat, and we've just got to make sure we, uh, you know, navigate our way through the next few months and next season to come out of the, come out of it stronger. One real area that you've been successful with, and and you have to try and get it right you never know what you're going to do is when you bring in your loan players and your loan players that ended the season really did well for you starting with Tumor and NA followed by Stephen Walker and, and Michael Nottingham I suppose Michael Nottingham was in a, a, a list of David Artel's potential targets but to Blackpool and Neil Critchley moved very quickly to uh, get him sorted out didn't they unfortunately for you but good news for him I suppose yeah he was in a no-lose situation Blackpool had an option on him he told us about that. Um, so we knew that the, the initial decision would be out of our hands and out of Michael's hands. Um, Michael didn't think he'd get the option to be taken because he hasn't played there. Um, and his money would go up significantly. Um, but Pritchard decided to do that. So, you know, that's brilliant news for him. Yeah, we miss out, but, you know, we move on. Um, you know, we, we, out of the, all the games last year, we didn't. We only had him for nine, was it? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Michael Nottingham's not irreplaceable. So uh, yes, we'll need someone in that position, but not. Um, I'm not overly worried. Talked about the players that you've released and the, the players, the lone players that, that have gone back. You've opened up contract talks and offered new deals to well three senior players, definitely, and three lads who are coming through around your squad as well. Chris Porter, James Jones, Dave Richards, Rio Adebisi, Travis Johnson and Regan Griffiths, obviously. Any news on that and where you're up to and what you're expecting? Yeah. Um, ask, ask him individually and I'll tell you where we're at. We'll, get, we'll start with the man that I suppose everybody's just wondering where he's going to go. He's been the top scorer for you. He's been a terrific signing since you went down to, I think it was Gatwick Airport three years ago and brought him back to, to the North West in, in Chris Porter. So we'll go with that one first. Um, declined our first offer, spoke to him last week, spoke to him again yesterday, talks are ongoing. So right, so there's, a, 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 so there's room to manoeuvre with that one and, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll see where it goes, obviously. And he's going to be a player that uh, will create interest because he's got a great goal scoring record but I would imagine the three years when you look at it Dave what he's had he must have loved it here and he would really probably hope he can get that deal done yeah well, look, he he said when I met him at Gatwick um, you know we were going on holiday the next day as well. yeah. and then he was getting married about he was going away to get married about four days later and being away for three weeks or something and he wanted it sorted before he got married. I don't know if that was his system or his wife's insistence, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he was great. And, and one of the things that always stuck in my memory is, uh, and I said, why, why would you want to come to crew? He said, because I think you've got a great chance of getting promoted. Hmm. You've never been promoted. And we've, we've now, I think that's the final box that we've ticked from that initial chat. 
Um, do I think we've made him a better player? Yes. I think Chris would admit that himself. Have we changed him, his style slightly? Yes. To help him, to help a 36-year-old? Yes. Um, is there still more to come from us as a football club towards him? From him in terms of goals and all this? Yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, so he's, he's been terrific for us. He has. You know, he's, he's carried the line um, for, for a good good number of games. And he's, you know, he's, I think he's been top scorer too out of the three seasons. So, mm. um, you know, he's, 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 he's done terrific for us. I'd say he could have gone elsewhere when we got him. But the, the, the two years with a, a year option based on appearances swung it for us. I was prepared to stick my neck on the line for such a, a long contract for a for a 32-year-old, but with someone with his pedigree and when you do the, the research into his character, we, we felt fairly confident that we were, we were well, well, we did feel confident and, and we were prepared to do that. So, Chris has been terrific for us and we hope that that journey will continue. Now we'll move to the midfield player, James Jones, who's had a real interesting two years, hasn't he, with, with, with what's gone on with him. One minute he's top of the tree and performing week in and week out close to a deal for a championship club. Then, unfortunately, serious injuries curtail all that. And then he finds it difficult to get his form back, finds it difficult to get into your team. But then ends the season really strong. And where are you with his, with his contract? Is he, is, he, is he a 24-year-old now going out of yeah. the free agent? Is he going into that, is he? Yeah. So, I'm expecting a call from his agent this morning. So... Um, I uh, I left him to well I left him a message yesterday. I haven't heard back from him, so I've left you know left enough time for him to digest exactly uh, what the offer is and wait to hear back. We've obviously already spoke to other clubs. Just the football great line, fine. That's just you know that's the supply and demand of it all, if you like. And I wouldn't expect anything anything less than that. So uh, so yeah. Um, that's where James is at. I'll have, I'll have more of an idea, hopefully, in the next two hours. Just, just breaking off before we go into the other players, is that something that you're, you're looking to get, to try and get to know where the players stand with the, the offers, the time limit that you, you want them to get back to you? I haven't put a time limit on it. I know some other clubs have. I know some clubs have given 14 days and said, right, it's a yes or a no, I'm 14, you know, you've got 14 days. And, and we've done that in the past, not 14 days, but we're given like the month. I think in the current climate, or certainly at the minute, I don't think any time limit is is fair. I, I don't want the players to feel as though they're, they're in a sort of a untenable position or, or a no-win position. And we're, we're putting a gun to their head because I don't, I think you could end up with an unhappy player for 12 or 24 months. Um, or or the, the feel as though they've made the wrong wrong decision and that's not good that's not good so they've got to be comfortable in signing um, will pressure come in, in time possibly but this is such a crazy transfer window because we've got clubs in every league playing but clubs in two of the four leagues finished as well mm. it's not as normal for playoffs but you'd think that the vast majority of all clubs in the EFL and the Premier League will have finished you know, because that's how it works. So it's such a fragmented um, window. Because, you know, we could have had a, a, a list of all out-of-contract players, for example. Whereas, that's, as far as I'm aware, that hasn't been published because there's still a number of clubs to publish theirs. There's still a number of clubs still playing. There's only two leagues that have actually finished. The majority, well, the majority of it is finished. So, you know, it's, it's, such a, it's going to be such an elongated window. In that sense, um, you know, you, you've just got to try and find them diamonds yourself. And I have to say, we've never re relied on the, the release list. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's not too big a deal for us, but it is different, that's for sure. Well, let's get back to your players then, because uh, you've been very happy with your goalkeeper situation. Will Yaskalina has come right to the fore. And done exceptionally well first season fully in the league and has won a promotion. Dave Richards has been around a, a few years now. His contract is, is running out. Where, where are you up to with Dave Richards? 
He's signed um, a new deal. He's, he's signed a new two-year deal. Um, it's been a bit unfortunate, um, Trigger, simply because I'd, I'd have expected Will to play a few less games and Trigger to play a few more. Um, I know this time last year there was a lot of um, discussion about the merits of Ben Garrett. I don't think we've missed him one iota. And Trigger's played some games in that. And, and Will's obviously played some games in that. So, um, you know, obviously we're delighted. Both goal, both goalkeepers have signed a new contract because Will's signed an extension. So, um, we're, we're delighted we've got two real good keepers. Um, and if Will's on international duty, we know Trigger's um, steps in admirably. If Will's having a bad spell, we know Trigger will be stepping in and, and you know, because there's no... Um, there's not much to choose between them, I've said. Trigger's um, developed into a, a, a real good goalkeeper. Um, and obviously, we, you know, the, the fans have seen Will first hand um, last season and, and what he can bring to the, to the table. There's still work to do with both of them. And that's what we're going to have to do. And we'll, 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 we'll hopefully make them better. Well, three youngsters who were, were part of the squad. I don't think Regan Griffiths might have made this team sheet, I'm not quite sure on that one, but definitely Rio Adebisi and Travis Johnson did make the, the, the team sheet and did get on the, the first team pitch. There are other three lads that uh, you're looking to sign up as well. Where are you there? Regan signed and sealed a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's got a bright future, that boy. He, we talk about character, you know, I'd take him to war. Right. He's has he got? Has he got to do? You know, has he, has he got to improve? Yes. You know, but there's one thing for certain: he's he's not going to. Um, he'll be able to look in the mirror at the end of his career and say, "I'd give him the best shot." And while ever he's doing that, we'll, we'll stick with him. I have to say, because I think he's he's only going to get better. So he's 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 done and dusted. He's he's signed. Travis has signed. He's signed a um, a new one year deal with a one year option. Um, you know, obviously he was, that took a bit longer because he was quite close to Christian and he wanted a bit of time, which mm. is totally understandable. And, you know, we've, we've all tried to put his arm around Travis and um, he's a good kid. He's got a good heart, Travis. Um, and he's been through a lot for such a young boy. Um, you know, and, and, and he's improved. You know, this time last year, I you know, said this to Travis, said it to his agent, we were wondering which way we were going to go, whether we were going to sort of fall off a cliff and sort of drift off into the abyss or really step up. Well, he's really stepped up, I have to say. Really stepped up. Did work Mansfield in the tech of trade, mm. albeit against a 3-5-2, so it weren't against a direct opponent. It was a good first game to, to come into. But then he gets thrown on it, swinging away. <laughs> uh, just went and half and went up there, there and Ryan in the end. And, you know, well, it cost the game. Not Travis and not Perry and Ryan, but just the fact that we didn't have any centre halves on the pitch. Um, you know, but what a great experience that was for him. And, and he's, he's improved no end this last season. And he's got to, you know, I've told him he's got to try and get in the first team next season. Um, you know, play more than five games, ten games, and, and that'll be sure some real progress as well. So, you know, um, He's come along great, so you know we're delighted that he's he's with us as well. Um, with Rio's agent yesterday, that's still ongoing, but I think we've got to a conclusion. Um, that's sort of tied in with something else, so um, you know that that's, that should be done hopefully by the end of this week. Well, three players who have been with you quite a lot. One not as much, but one that you've got a lot of high hopes for and you sent him out on loan and you're expecting him to become a player because you mentioned him many times, but Ollie Finney, Owen Dale, Josh Lundstrom, they were contract-triggered options for yourself, your football club. You've done that, haven't you? They're all done, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, all, they're all here. I think, I think when you... The, the sort of um, strategy that you've tried to... Uh, implement or have implemented over the last couple of years have really benefited all three of them. 
Yes, Josh hasn't sort of uh, come right through it yet because he hasn't played in the first team. But certainly the other two have. You know, the fact that Oli goes out and doesn't do very well twice. And we're going, come on, you've got to, you've got to do well. You're not in last chance saloon, but you're not far off it. And mm. he did terrific. He's done absolutely terrific to, to, to turn his career around. That's, that's too drastic and, and a bit unfair on him. But he was drifting into oblivion. He was. But he, he hadn't half got some ability and he hadn't half got a knack for goal. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's had a good season. I don't know how many games he's played this year, but he's played plenty. Which he's played whatever twenty games or something mm. in the first team now, and he's got another big season. He, he, I think next season could be, needs to be, his sort of breakthrough season where he goes, no, this one of these positions is mine now, mm. or I'm I'm, I'm um, at least sharing it, as opposed to being sort of first choice replacement, if you like. That's his next step. But that only come about because of the experiences he had while out on loan. And that's the same for Owen. You know, Owen, you know, he, he went to Altrincham a couple of times and did terrific in the end. And Owen's still got a lot of um, things to work on and we will work on him. Um, but he's got some attributes that no one else in the football club has. Um, there's another one that will run for a brick wall for you. He's a thinker, sometimes overthinker. Which I, which I don't mind. We just have to get it back to basics with him. But he will run all day for you. He'll run himself into the ground. We've got to work on his own product a bit more. Um, but that'll come. I've got, I've got no, uh, you know, no worries on that score. And then obviously Josh has been out, you know, and 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 done well. I'd say um, we wanted him to play a bit higher last year, but we were grateful that Kids Grove took him in the end. Um, and, he, and he, will, he will play in our first team. I've got no doubt about that either. So all three of them were just were implementing the option. I hope you're happy. And they all were, um, which, is, which is a good thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we're, we're hopeful on all three of them that we're going to have progressive seasons. When the season was curtailed, you were top of the table. And over the last couple of, well, probably three or four years ago, you used to be able to lie down and go sleep around where the scouters used to come and sit because there was never anybody there. That's not the position now. It's quite filled up and you can understand why because you've got some good players. Is there any news on any of your own players in terms of where they are and signed up extensions or trying to get extensions or has, it, has anybody been on the phone to you? I, I, we haven't had one phone call about any of our players from outside football club. Um, how likely that is, I think in the current landscape, I would say unlikely. But I don't think impossible. Well, you know, that's, as far as I'm aware, nobody's cut the forward lines. So um, <laughs> they can still get hold of it if they want to. So, uh, you know, they know where we are. I'm, like you've said, I'm sure that all these clubs that may be interested have seen our players. And... Uh, if they want to pick up the form, they will do. But I can't see it in the current climate, if I'm being honest. Update on a couple of the lads, if you can bring us that news. Long time out. Definitely uh, allowed Luke Offer to come in and pro progress and be a, a real shining light. But Eddie Nolan was your steady Eddie, wasn't he? And he's been out for quite a long time now. And Tom Larry, who was flying around in the midfield and was right up there. Where are they up to, Dave, in terms of that, that fitness now? Uh, Tom's an easy one. He's having a hernia up on Thursday. Um, that'll put him out for four to six weeks. But it'll resolve any issues. We would have done it sooner, but um, he weren't allowed in the hospital, basically. We couldn't even sneak him under the door. Um, which in normal circumstances we probably would have been able to do. Um, no, so he's had to have three sort of coronavirus tests in the last week and make sure they're all clear, you know, which is fully understandable. I've said that in the, in the, the, the surgeon wasn't allowed to do elective surgery um, until this point. So that's delayed us, but not, not drastically. Hernia operations are quite common, quite routine. 
and and obviously we, we touch wood that everything will go according to plan and it's not a, a long you know, rehabilitation period normally and we hope that that's the that's the case um, in terms of Eddie he's progressing really well really really well um, when we're back whenever that is um, he will start joining in um, tentatively at first but we we feel as though there's some good progress being made there it's been difficult for him obviously on his own but he keeps you know I think he's been back to the training ground twice to change the weights and <laughs> we've just opened up for him. I haven't opened up for him but you know one of the, one of the staff have opened up for him and uh, said right swap them weights for a bit more weight <laughs> Because that's what he wants, and then he goes back home and whatever. So, um, you know, he's been he's been terrific on his own, and, and I, we're all hoping that he reaps the, re, the rewards that he's sowing at the minute in terms of being a real good professional away from the football club. Well, everybody connected to the club is still enjoying it through the summer months. I know they can't go out on their holidays and celebrate, they can't go into the pubs and celebrate, but they're all talking about. It's great to see Crew Alexander back in League One. And when you look at some of them football clubs that are in League One, it is real mouth-watering uh, fixtures to look forward to. What have you been told, Dave, from the latest, from likes of Charles Grant, who follows on the EFL meetings? What is the state of play at the moment as we get ready for this week's start of the playoffs? Have you got any updates on League One next season? What's going to happen? We, I got told a couple of weeks ago, Expect to start date middle of September. I got told yesterday that that might be brought forward to the end of August. Um, I think there, well, there's still obviously discussions ongoing um, with regards to the start date. We've got a plan in place um, for the middle of September that can just get brought forward. Um, you know, I, I think the, the, there's reasons, um, which I, I, took, you know, I won't go into why it could be brought forward, but there'll be no football on, you know, so I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to, to understand why it get brought forward and mm. games on Sky, so, um, not our games, but you know what I mean, there's, there's mm. less of a rebate there for the football clubs, so it makes sense. Whether it comes to that or not, I don't know, but that's that's what we're working to do, and we'll... we'll We'll wait in You've had to adjust, have you, your, your, your schedule and your plans? Because what you usually do is usually players come in a couple of days a week, don't they, and do some work and you get six or seven pre-season games. So is that going to all change, unfortunately, for, for where we're up to? Yeah, we won't, um, we, we won't be uh, having the, the sort of part-time stuff uh, this year because the, the boys are on furlough and there's no point taking them off furlough for a couple of sessions a week. Um, so that's altered plans, but we'll just make it a bit longer and ease them back in gently. So uh, that's that's where we're at. You know, again, it's another thing, another decision that we've had to make, which we're all comfortable with. We all understand the reasons why that helps protect the football club. So, you know, in normal circumstances, we would have done it different, but it won't detract from where we're at. So... It's, it's, these decisions are made on a probably on a fairly consistent daily basis to so we navigate our way through choppy waters, and that's what we're going to do. The one thing that has been happening, of course, is supporters uh, didn't see the end of the season. They were nine games short, and you know they haven't been coming back and wanting refunds. And quite a lot have stayed with you know the the money into the football club, which is a terrific gesture. But on the other hand, as well. They're also purchasing the season tickets, relishing League One starting as well. And, and again, it's a hard climate financially for everybody, but you must be delighted that the fans are, are coming into your shop. It's open all week and uh, purchasing season tickets. Yeah, I, I got told um, last night that the first day could have gone you know, as well as expected. And we, we, I can't tell you how grateful we are as a football club. For, this, for, the, for those fans that are, you know, purchasing season tickets because uh, it's a terrific gesture. And, you know, there's a lot of families, a lot of people that are, uh, have been affected financially. So to make uh, a contribution to make sure we are 
like I say, it, it steadies the boat. Um, you know, and it's, it, we're, we're forever indebted to our traffic fans who, who come in with new syndicates and, and we hope a lot more do. You know, like I say, we've gone up a league and we hope that we go past you know, the season ticket figure that we had last season. Um, so we, we, you know, we, we are extremely grateful and we hope that we keep coming and we hope today is a similar day to yesterday. And obviously, going towards the end of the month and payday, we hope that that's a big time um, for us. So, you know, we hope that they, they appreciate what we've given them this season. Um, it will be, in the end, in strange circumstances. And we hope that they're with us next season and they can afford to be with us next season because, um, you know, their support is um, welcome, unwavering. Um, and, and warmly received, especially in the current climate. Just one final point, Dave, just going back to your targets. You, you, we've talked about the players that you've offered contracts to. Have you got room to manoeuvre to bring in targets, that, you know, the area of the, of the pitch that you want? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's listening probably the directors. So, you know. we, have. we have. Will it change? I don't know, possibly. Will it go up or down? Possibly, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we, we're working to what we can afford, and you know, there's no uh, no reason to believe that that won't be the, be the case going forward. We, we're we're fairly confident um, that we can attract the requisite quality, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll we'll bring in players that that improve us. <laughs>